I think it all started with, with the term uh, Eigengrau, which means uh, intrinsic gray. And uh, it's the, if you look at this dark space over there, you see this uh, gray, blue, uh, sort of very faint dots in your eye. <clears throat> and this is uh, like a, um, let's say like a um, sort of veal that is produced by the eye itself. So it has nothing to do with what you see or nothing to do with the outside world. It has to do really with the, the eye as an, as an instrument that produces this kind of color and grayness. Um, and it looks also like, a, if you concentrate on it, it kind of looks like it's, your eyes are a bit dirty. Um, but this is like the intrinsic quality of, of the eye. And I've been sort of looking into this subject quite a lot about how our optical, uh, let's say, uh, uh, instruments create images uh, on their own and uh, within themselves. Um, our eyes normally are also both a camera as well as a, a, a lens. So it can, it can both look and, and it can also record. Um, and I'm interested in how this sort of uh, process can create images on its own. So, so I was at the same point, I was also going uh, uh, quite a lot to the Victoria and Albert Museum. And I, I, showed, I realized that uh, at the first visit already, um, that they had a very special kind of uh, attitude towards showing their work, um, which was that they don't give a lot of information about the work. Uh, and there's also too, too much on display. There's, there's too much to comprehend. It's too much to see. Uh, literally millions of things to look at. Um, so the philosophy has been in, in, in the past, it's a 19th century museum, and, and sort of in the 19th century, they, in the beginning of 20th century, they're very much uh, um, sort of approached objects through their material. Um, and not through historical context, and not through social context. And they also show things not chronologically, but they show things related to their material. Um, and if you take away all the kind of informational, uh, let's say, um, uh, guidelines, uh, uh, if you take that away from the work, then the work becomes very mysterious and very confusing. Um, but there is also this element where a work or at least that's what the Victorian Albert Museum thinks, starts to speak about itself uh, through the material that it's made from and through the uh, sort of formal qualities of the work. There was, there was a selection of the, the type of material that I was, uh, objects that I was looking for. I, I was looking for uh, uh, translucent uh, materials, a material that could kind of, that you can see through. For a very long time I've also been interested in things that show um, the, the inter, inter, interior as well as the exterior at the same time. Um, so imagine if you make an x-ray of your body and you project that x-ray on top of your body, then you both see the, the outside of your body and the inside of your body. <clears throat> and so I was looking for objects that did the same thing. And um, so that's why there's, there's a few glass pieces because glass pieces, they, they don't only show the outside but also the inside and, and becomes one layer. Um, but I was also looking for material that you could travel through. So, for example, the wood pieces um, here, they are made with, with, with tiny holes that you could sort of travel, you could kind of look through, and you, can, you could see uh, what the material is made from uh, on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the object actually gives information about not only what, uh, not only uh, about the service, but also about uh, its construction. Um, so there's already a, a kind of, um, let's say, um, a, a something going on in terms of uh, the, the object speaking about itself uh, in, a, in very basic terms. And apart from that, uh, I was just mostly looking at, at things that I could, uh, that could be available. Mm -hmm. So these glass pieces I found uh, in, uh, together with antique dealers. Um, and they are all in the Victorian Albert Museum collection, but 
they've also been mass produced so they can be found mm -hmm. uh, let's say in, in shops as well um, and the other pieces I've had remade um, mm -hmm. so because they are unique works and, and mm -hmm. I kind of recreated that mm -hmm. there's an interesting part of of the museum, the, the Victorian Albert Museum, uh, there's, there's a large and important department of the Victorian Albert Museum that consists completely of replicas and fakes. So fake artworks. So there's also this kind of history in the Victorian Albert Museum that through copying, you actually learn sort of the skills of, of mm -hmm. let's say, design um, and craft. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I also, Using that process, I also reproduced some 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 pieces, um, and and they are photographed and uh, they are especially filmed. The film says the main work, um, and the most important thing in that is that they are they they become mediated. Uh, so I, I didn't choose to to show the objects themselves, but I wanted to for them to to be to be mediated through my let's say um, sort sort of layer of intentions. The film combines these uh, these objects together with planets, um, mainly because of the sort of hyper materialistic uh, attitude that is present in both. I mean, geologists are only interested in the in the material of planets, and if, whenever we discover a new planet, we always look at what material it's made from, and then we reconstruct, <coughs> let's say, this um, the. Uh, um, we reconstruct the history of the of the planet uh, through its material layers. Like, um, that tells us everything about when it was, um, let's say, made or when it came into existence and how long has it been um, like that and was was there ever water? It's the most important question that we always ask mm -hmm. when we look for planet. Like, it's all about services and it's all about material, which is mm -hmm. exactly the same way the Victorian Albert Museum sort of asks us to reconstruct the history of a, of a piece uh, through its material. And, um, so there's a, there's a a combination of these two approaches to, to objects. Uh, planets are basically objects, very large, large objects, but objects. Um, and the, the, th the beautiful thing about outer space is that there's no social context. Um, there is obviously history, um, but there is no social context because there's no human beings. Um, so, yeah, I work together with, with, um, with a, a science fiction, uh, a special effects, guy yeah. um, who, uh, who did a lot of work in the 70s and so with a lot of um, analog uh, uh, special effects mm -hmm. um, uh, methods and so we used, we kind of relived that um, and the interesting thing about that is it's also all about material. I mean the, the, in the 70s just before let's say the digital kind of era in, in science fiction filmmaking, mm -hmm. everything was hand painted and all, all everything was sort of hand sculpted. So there's also a very kind of direct link not only to craft, um, but also to very um, to, to decorative um, sort of a decorative form of art, uh, decorative painting and decorative uh, sculpting. Um, it also makes everything very physical. And so it, it, there was a very conscious choice not to use any digital um, sort of uh, techniques um, because I've, I always have the feeling that also looking at, 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 looking at um, films that use a lot of uh, special effects, that, that most of the special effects that are done digitally actually look very flat. Um, that's why they, now you need 3D glasses to make it more, give it more depth. I, I, I used to work a lot with language within, within my work, within my films, um, and at a certain point I disconnected using language in my installations um, and give more importance to language in, in a kind of very conventional form, which is uh, writing and, and putting it in a book. Um, so I think the book is very important because it's, um, it, it functions through a completely different economy. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's much more democratic in a way. You can, you can distribute it much more widely than, than, um, than a work like this. But the most important thing is that it conveys uh, information in a different way. Um, language conveys information in a different way. Language is about communication. And um, I don't think 
artworks are about communication. I think artworks are way too complex to to um, work in the same way that language does. Language does works in a very direct way. So I kind of disconnected the two, um, and then use the book for what it's really uh, good for, which is to um, communicate and to connect different ideas uh, through language uh, and make it into an object and then kind of uh, shoot it into the world as a sort of autonomous part of the, of, of the project. So it is also made with the realization that many people will only remember the book um, or will only uh, have the book available um, as a sort of as a part of the project, um, which I like about books because they're very private. I mean, you can buy one and you can keep one for the rest of your life, but it's it's yours and you have a kind of private relationship to it. You always read books also in private uh, situations or, or private spaces in in a train or on your couch. Um, so it felt logical to sort of disconnect those two.